Good morning, everybody. Going to give everybody a few minutes to jump on in. And what I want to do while I'm waiting for some folks to jump in is I want, all right, so we're good on the audio side of things. That's a very good thing. Uh, folks are jumping in, and this is important now. Um, Circle prospecting, what it is, why it's important, and some strategies you might want to explore as you want to go and win more business. Um, so circle prospecting as, a, as, a, as an idea is, whether it's a listing or an open house or a buyer need, it's gathering and aggregating the data of the homeowners that are around that listing, uh, that buyer need, whatever, and being able to curate and aggregate those owners' numbers and then reaching out and calling them, uh, messaging them, sending them letters, doing, doing what needs to get done to that, to that respect. But I wanna show you why, it, why right now it's so important for us to do. I'm gonna show you an easy way on how to get names. Um, and that's, that's a completely free way to do it. But what I wanna do first is I wanna show you why I think this is so important. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you so that you can see this. This is a two year price breakdown of the median sold price in the entire MLS. Um, so I pulled this so that you can just see kind of where we're at in the market and where we're going as to why circle prospecting is going to be a great way for you to win more. So if you look at January of 2019 here on the left and January of 2021 here on the right, what you're going to see is that the average sales price in 2000, or the median sales price rather, um, in 2019 was 127.5 and the median sold price in 2021 in January is $150,000, which is an increase of 17.6% and $22,500 from a median standpoint, okay? So you can see that you can see that trend line is you know is ticking up. You can see that and even if you look at September of 19 to September of 20, you see that increase as well, right? So all indications are showing us that the median price is going up. So why this is important is if we look at it from a median standpoint, if you have a client that bought a house in January of 2019, in theory, they can sell it from a median standpoint for 17% more than they paid, right? So an opportunity for somebody to make a little bit of money. So if we look at the four uh, the homes that are for sale, and I'm going to remove this pending uh, the sold numbers, January of 19 to January of 21 is a um, it's a 10 percent increase in median for sale price, which is a thirteen thousand dollar nine hundred thirteen thousand nine hundred dollar increase, right? And then if we look at the if we look at under contract, that's 11 percent increase. And if we remove for sale here, that's a $15,000 increase in 11%. So let's go back to sold. And I want to do a year over year now with you. Let's go to January of 20. And let's go to January of 21. Come on. So if we look at year over year, rather than that two year historical, let's do a 12 month historical you're up uh, median, you're up in home, home value at 11.9%, so almost 12% of one, from one year ago. So when we look at this, you know, January of 20, that median sold price in the entire MLS, now this includes every residential property. So whether it's East Cleveland, whether it's a complete teardown, um, whether it's the a mansion uh, or a house on Lake Road, Tristan Thompson's house, it doesn't matter, right? This is, it's all included in the, in these numbers. So a median of 134 in 2020 to a median of 150 in January of 21 is a $16,000 increase. When we look at for sale, again, let's remove this. It's a 5.5% 5 .5 
homes are so what 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 that means is that the median uh, number, which is the number in the middle, right? You have your average, which is the, which is accumulation of everything, and you have your median, which is the middle number. You are five point five percent more in twenty twenty than being asked in twenty twenty one. So I want to look. I want to then go and look at the sold price versus the original price of homes. And I'm gonna do this um, and show this to you in two different ways. And I wanna do this because I think it's important. Um, so, um, 89% of the market, 89.4% of the market in January of 2021 sold with one, with at least one price change. So out of the, so that would mean 1,124 homes sold at 89.282% sales price to original price that needed one price change, okay? If you look at the homes that didn't need a price change, so let's, let's remove this. Homes that were priced correctly Homes that were priced correctly in January of 2021 sold at 100.63% sold price to original price. So we're, again, well, this is obvious, right? We're seeing multiple offers. We're seeing homes go above asking, right? And that, was, that number was 2,568 homes. So if we compare that now to January of 2020, Come on, sometimes this lags. All right, so if we compare this now to January of 2020, January of 2020's numbers were slightly different. That was just at about 97%, little over 97, 98%, right? So 98.49% a year ago. So we're almost at a two and a half percent increase just in sales price in, the, in, in that time period. So when we, when we go and we compare it, it's 2.2% increase over last year. When we go and we look at supply and demand, let's look at the homes that are currently for sale. You know, looking at January of 21 versus January of 20, thir we have 39.3% less homes for sale in January than we did a year ago. So that, you know, so that that gives you an idea of what we're feeling in the market today, right? Buyers want to buy homes. There's not enough homes for sale. This is creating this multiple offer situation, which is causing buyers agents to completely go berserk and lose their mind. So if we look at homes that are under contract, under contract homes are up 19.6% over last January. This is a this is an interesting number. But it doesn't surprise me because there's less inventory to go on, right? So because there's less inventory, buyers aren't as picky. Yet, and yet I would argue with you that buyers might be more picky today in this market than they were before because they understand what they're buying, they understand what they're paying for, things of that nature. The buyer, the buyers understand the market slightly more, right? So then, if we take and we look in the solds. Homes that are sold are up 5.8% compared to 2020. So these, these numbers, I, you know, they don't surprise me. They don't surprise me. More homes are selling, yet there's less homes for sale, right? So if we look at this number, there were 11,756 homes for sale in the MLS in January, 51 100 went under contract. Now, the the of these 5100, these part of that number is from is from the the is an aggregate of the of October, November, and December, right? So keep in mind that 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 under contract number is an aggregate of most likely the last 90 days, and then the sold number was 3600 homes sold. Okay. So if we look at that trend line, look at look at this. We're seeing the number of homes for sale decrease. We're seeing the trend line on homes that are under contract increase, and we're also seeing that trend line of homes that are, that have sold increase. And again, I believe I believe we're seeing these two under contract and sold up 
because demand is because supply is down, demand is still high. Okay. Now again, I'm taking this as a 10,000 foot view. We can break this down and go city by city, uh, zip code by zip code if you wanted, and you can get very specific. And again, you have access to all of this through agent metrics. You have access to all of this through agent metrics. I'm logging in the exact same way you're logging in and you can see the same information I'm seeing, right? So then if we go on, we wanna look at the sales rate and what this is going to show is um, the months of inventory in the entire MLS, okay? This is going to show us the months of inventory and this is going to show us our days on market. So if we look January of 2020, there was, I wanna see this differently. Um, months of inventory, January of 2020, you can see that there was just over one, uh, just over three months of inventory, January 2020, and days on market was somewhere around 73, 73-ish days, okay? So, so if you look at this two-year trend, holy cow, guys, 73% difference. 73% difference. So I want to go back to January of 2020. I want to go back to January of 2021. And what this is going to show you is that the difference over 12 months is that there's now 1.1 months of inventory left in the market. So this is what you're seeing when you see homes and buyers saying there's nothing good on the market, this is what you're seeing. You're seeing that there's only a month of supply, which means that if not another house hits the market, we will be completely out of saleable listings, homes for sale in 1.1 month. That's what this is showing, okay? So what we're seeing here is this, this is why this is so important. We're seeing days on market, it's dropping. Look at this throughout all of 2020. There's not one instance where the days on market ticked up except from September to October. And then it, it dipped again in November. And then obviously through the holidays, it dipped. And it dipped right around 55 days on market in December. But we're somewhere around 47, 48 days on market in January of 21, 47 days as you, as you can see. So what we're seeing here is directly influenced to what you feel in the market. Now, I was telling a, a group of agents in the Westlake office yesterday that, uh, and you, you know, you if you saw the video from the other day, you saw this as well. There were, an agent I was talking to, 13 offers they wrote and only three were accepted. Well, you look at these numbers and it, it makes sense. I understand why there's not a lot of saleable listings out there. So part of what circle prospecting is going to allow you to do is to create the market that you need for your business, okay? The reason we do this in, in large part is because it's, would you, wait, well, let me ask you, let me just ask you a question. Wouldn't you agree that it's easier to sell a home in this market that's not for sale than it is to sell a home that is for sale? If you were able to represent a buyer that was looking for a property and you could take them to a home that currently wasn't for sale, you found a seller that was ready, able, and willing to move, and you were able to bring the two of them together, is that not an easier house to sell than one that was incoming soon for seven days, had 46 showings and 17 offers, and was gone in 48 hours? Which is the easiest house to sell? I'm going to assume it's that one. I'm going to assume it's that one. So when we look at circle prospecting, these are the numbers that we want to show. And that this is, you know, this is why we want to we want to look at this because again, it's going to go back to supply and demand. We don't have the supply, we obviously have the demand. The demand is up 16.9% or 19.6%, right? So if we look at simply the numbers in and of itself, if we look at the numbers in and of itself, right? The number of homes for sale is down $7,500 or 7,500 units in the entire MLS for sale. 
That's a lot of houses, guys. That's a lot of houses. You know, so when we look at it, it's no wonder that we sit there and we're like, I wonder what this looks like. I wonder why people are getting frustrated. What, you know, it's, it's obvious in my opinion, what's, what's going on and why it's going on, right? That's obvious. So I wanna then, I wanna then go back into a different screen share here. And I'm just gonna, uh, I wanna show you, I wanna show you something here in the MLS that we went through yesterday with the Westlake office as well, when we were looking at things. So we're gonna go single family homes in the city of Westlake. Oh, nope, just Westlake. We're going to go single family homes in the city of Westlake. There, are, as you see, there are 40 homes for sale in the city of Westlake. Okay. 40 homes for sale. The least expensive home is 179. The most expensive home is 1.5 million. Did you know that if you wanted, if you had a buyer that wanted to move into Westlake and only spent $300,000, they only have four houses to choose from. And look at this. 18 days is the longest that a house has been on, on the under, um, I'm sorry, on the market in, in Westlake under 300,000, right? Now, let's say they need to have uh, four bedrooms, three bathrooms, and a three car garage. This is the only house they can buy. And in fact, it's, it's, uh, it's to be built. So there's nothing in this city of Westlake that matches the four bedroom, three bathroom, three car garage. Even if you went to three bedroom, there's nothing for sale in the city of Westlake that matches this. This is where, this is where circle prospecting comes in. And this is, this is where we can have value for our buyers, okay? This is where we have have value for our buyers, but let's also so let's let's take Westlake out of it and let's go look at Parma. And let's say in Parma that you wanted to be somewhere between two hundred and fifty and three hundred. Let's go to Parma. We're gonna go for sale. 40 single family homes for sale in the city of Parma. And the city has like 5,000 zip codes, right? So there's a total of 40 homes for sale. Least expensive is 85.9, the most expensive is 249. So you couldn't even go 250 to 300 if you wanted to be in Parma, right? But let's say that you needed, let's say you needed three, a total of three bathrooms in Parma. These are the, there's only three houses that you can buy in, the, in, in that entire city. There's only three houses with three bathrooms. You see the opportunity here? So I wanna show you um, in the MLS, how you can pull this, how you can pull this owner information data that, um, that you can use to then go out and reach out to people. So let's say that you have somebody. So we're going to go into the MLS here. We're going to log in. We're going to go to search. We're going to go to public record. Now you can do this um, in Realist as well. You can go into the Realist tax or what I think is easier. And this is a trick Laura Graber taught us. Uh, what's easier is that you can go to search. You can go down to public record. Now this is going to pull all of this information. So you can go owner's last name, you can search by city, by county. So I wanna search by Broadview Heights. Okay. And then I wanna go sold and I wanna do specific dates. So I wanna go, these are people that sold, these are homes that sold between January of 19 and January of 20. Okay, there were 280 houses in Broadview Heights that sold in that, in that time period. But 
we need four bedrooms. We need three bathrooms. And we need total square feet of 4,000. Nothing. Okay. So total square feet of 3,000 to 4,000. So now we have a buyer. They need to live in Broadview Heights. They need four bedrooms. Let's say they need three plus bathrooms. Okay. Let's make, let's see, let's just see what happens. So four, four bedrooms, three bathrooms, they need anywhere between 3,000 and 4,000 square feet. And what we're doing is we're looking for, we're looking for people that bought their house in 2019 that we might be able to reach out to to sell. We're doing that, if you remember, when I showed you the market data, because of that increase, they can make about 17% on their, on their, on their money. You can take this back to 2018, 2017. I'm only doing this 2019 for, you know, just for kicks, right? So then we hit results here. And there's 12 houses in the city of Broadview Heights that, that, that meet that criteria. I have tax ID number. I have the address. I have the owner's name. I have their taxes. And I have what, they last, what the last sales price was and when it sold, okay? This ticket here is going to tell us that, that this Sexton property was an REO sale. But again, we can go through all of this information. We can find the subdivision that they were in. We can find the school district. Broadview Heights has two school districts. Part of Broadview Heights for some stupid reason is in North Royalton. And some part of North Royalton is in Broadview Heights. It's the way the farmlands were divided. 100,000 years ago and nobody decided to fix it. There's, there, there, there's your brief synopsis on why Broadview Heights North World and share school districts. But it allows you then to figure out what they want. Okay, so let's say, so now we want, let's say this is what we want. Click on this, this Andover, it's going to pull up and it's going to show you, um, I need to share my desktop with you so you can see that. Um, so it's going to show you now where where the property is located, okay? So what I did, so you did, because you didn't see it, um, Cornell, we're going to click on Cornell. It's going to load a map, and it's going to show you the parcel, picture of the house. You can go to the listing in the MLS. This is what it sold for. Listed in 2019, it sold in August. It was a conventional sale. The list price was 324, it sold for 292. It shows you who the listing agent was, who the buyer's agent was, it shows you everything. So you can look at this and, and now you can start to see, you know, is this something that maybe my client will be interested in from when they bought it? But even more so what, what, this, is, what this is going to allow you to do guys. Um, move this. What this is going to allow you to do is to come back here. Now you have all this information, you can select it, you can export it to a tax grid. You can export a, to billing address import or export. So what this is going to do is, um, so if they, let's say that uh, if you go in, well, I'll show you. So we go back in here to the parcel ID. So this is their, uh, their billing address. And then they have a tax address, which is the property address, okay? So you can do it, you can choose to do that a couple of different ways. Uh, so let's go back to single tax grid view. You can then go to property address export. And then we're gonna go to export here. I'm going to give you 12 the property tax exports. And then this is going to open up in numbers or Excel, whatever you use. So 
for here's that information, then you can do it. Uh, you can create address labels. You can do all that stuff. So now you have that. You can then create that. You can write your, you can send them your letter. You can do all of all of those things. Okay. You can do a billing address export. This is going to do, crank it out into the into a, another CSV for you. You have this information now. You can then amount a mailing. You know, you have everything that you have everything. So do you see how this could help you win and be able to take a buyer that wants to live in New Hampton and Broadview Heights where there aren't any homes for sale and you can go and find owners that have been in their homes that might have equity that might be looking to sell. And it's very easy to do coming here and into the public record search. Okay. So that's one way to find that data. Um, you can play with it, you know, you can go and let, you know, let's do, just for giggles here, you can just search for prop, uh, owner's last names, there's 21. So these are all the, all the people that have my last name that own property in the MLS, uh, you can go find them that way as well, right? So there's all sorts of different things that you can do uh, in Parma, you can go 144134, this is going to pull um every owner and there's all oh, 5,000 plus homes in 44134 then then you can come back in here and now you can really get owner occupied so we don't want to take we, we don't want to send it to any um to anybody that's an m uh, well let's let's say you don't want owner occupied owner let owner occupied no let's say you're looking for an investor 44134 it's not owner occupied right and there, it's a three bedroom. Your investor wants three bedrooms. They want, uh, you know, they want one to two, one to two total baths. There's 778 houses for sale. Here they are. Now you can see these are all non-owner occupied homes in the city of Parma. Okay, great tool here to be able to scrub that data. So. I'm going to come back out of screen share. I'm going to stop sharing my screen here so you can just see me. Um, the reasons why we would circle prospect. I think the biggest reason for why we will circle prospect and why circle prospecting is something that you want to incorporate into your business is if you're hosting an open house, there's a tremendous opportunity for you to gather this data for your open house to then procure buyer leads and seller leads for your for the open house. Because we know that oftentimes we're not going to sell the house we're in for an open house. Yet, a lot of times buyers are starting their search, they wanna see the house, and sellers are interviewing agents that are hosting open houses, right? So if you're, so let's just say hot property, you're in Hudson, hot property, it's not, you know, you know, it's not going to sell, sell, um, well, you know, it's going to sell quickly, right? You know, you know that this is your one shot to try and procure a lead out of this open house because next, you know, tomorrow it's going to sell. So you circle prospect around this open house to let's say a hundred homeowners, a hundred different homeowners. And you say, Hey, it's Rich Gannon with Russell Real Estate. I'm going to be holding an open house on Sunday from 12 to 2 over at 123 Main Street. Not sure if you're interested in moving, but I, I wasn't sure if you knew anybody that would be interested in moving into your into this community. As you know, this neighborhood's highly desirable. Uh, so I wanted to give you the opportunity. Again, my name's Rich Gannam with Russell Real Estate. You can, you know, you blah, 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 blah. You can slide dial that right in. Once you have phone numbers, you can do a mailing. The other reason that you will circle prospect around your open house is this. Let's say this listing in Hudson that you're holding open is $500,000, okay? It's a great price point. In Hudson, really nice house, 500 grand. However, we're trying to figure out, well, who, who's gonna come and buy this house? Well, I would think there are three different people that might be interested in this house in Hudson for 500,000. Being there are three different types of buyers. We have the we have the buyer that has a larger estate home in Hudson that's that is looking to stay in the community because they love Hudson people and you, if you live in Hudson or know anybody that lives in Hudson they absolutely love it they want to stay in Hudson and they're they're, they're looking to downsize from their estate home right 
500 grand. It's a great price point when you're in seven, eight, nine, over north of a million, 500 grand is a great price point in Hudson. You also have people in the, in the community that are looking to move up into their, 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 next, their next forever home, right? So they live in Hudson, their kids go to school in Hudson, they don't wanna leave Hudson, yet they've outgrown where they're at. So now there's the move up buyer going into Hudson where that $500,000 house would be the perfect buyer for, right? So then, so that's, that, that's buyer number two that you could circle prospect for. The third buyer is the buyer that's in a $250,000 house, $300,000 house that doesn't live in Hudson. Maybe they live in Twinsburg or maybe they live in Parma or Strongsville or whatever. And they want to move to Hudson because they want to be in the schools. They like the community. They love that little downtown area. Hudson is just so great. They want to live in Hudson. So there's, and then you could even go there. There's a fourth type of family that wants to live in Hudson. And it's because they're sending their kids to Western Reserve or wherever, and they're relocating so that they can go to Western Reserve or whatever. So there's really that, that, that would be your niche market out of state relocating for Western Reserve. But we'll focus on those, on, on those first three. We're looking folks looking to downsize. We're looking folks moving to move up and we're looking at folks moving to move in. Now, wouldn't it be great to be able to then circle prospect your New York community, that Twinsburg community, that $300,000 Twinsburg community. And let's say we're gonna door knock and we're gonna do it safely. We're gonna do gloves. We might have masks, right? Because people are still freaked out about this coronavirus. But so we're gonna do it safely and we're gonna, we're gonna print out a flyer and we're gonna invite them and we're gonna knock on the door and say, hi, this is, you know, my name's Rich with Russell Real Estate. I'm actually going to be holding an open house in Hudson on Sunday. And I, I don't know if you're looking to move. I don't know if you know anybody looking to move. But if you are, I wanted to invite you to this house. It's a really, really great house. Open house is from 12 to 2. Uh, I just wanted to invite you to it. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day. And we're on to the next house. Okay. So now we're prospecting the open house. So we're, we're prospecting our open house to then make sure our open house is successful. We're killing like 15 birds with one stone here. So that's if you don't want to make phone calls, you can door knock it. You can then send, or you, or you can for that open house, right? If you do want us to make phone calls, you can jump in and invite folks. Hey, it's Rich with Russell Real Estate. I'm holding one, two, three Main Street open in Hudson on Sunday from 12 to 2. Not sure if you or anybody you know is interested in moving into the community. It's a great, it's a great house. It has a ton of great updates and features. I'd really like to see you there. If you have any questions, here's my number, here's my email address. I'll see you Sunday. So that's if you're gonna that's if you're gonna prospect around your open house. But how about how about this scenario? How about this scenario? You have somebody that wants to move in, and I'm gonna go back to New Hampton and Broadview Heights. You have somebody that wants to move into New Hampton. There's like three or four hundred homes in the community. There aren't very many for sale right now. Um, one actually, there's one for sale for four hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars, and it just came back on the market because the reload buyer walked. Okay. So you have a buyer that wants to move in there. You've scheduled a showing. You find out, listing agent calls you, hey, we're in multiple offers. Uh, submit your highest and best. Okay, great, we do that. Tomorrow night, we get a phone call. Hey, just wanted to let you know, seller went with another offer, thank you so much. So now you've lost, but you have a buyer that wants to go and buy a $450,000 house in New Hampton specifically. They want to live in New Hampton. What do you do? You have a buyer ready, able, and willing. You can do two things. You can sit, you can sit back at your desk where you're sitting right now. You can sit back, twiddle your thumbs, and wait for somebody to go out and list this property to create another feeding frenzy for you to go back out and rush out at 6:30 on Super Bowl Sunday. And instead of watching the game, you're running this buyer into this house only to find out that they're in multiple offers again. And now you're pulling your hair out, the buyer's pulling their hair out. They're willing to waive their inspection and an appraisal, and they're going to give their firstborn kid just to move into New Hampton. That sucks. Like, I want you to watch the game, right? And they want to watch the game, and they want to keep their kid and, and, every, and all of that other stuff. And you understand I'm joking to some degree. But yet, there are buyers in this market that are willing to give whatever 
just to win. So what if you were proactive and said, okay, there's 400 homes for sale in New Hampton. We're gonna go in, we're gonna go in, we're gonna go do our search again. We're gonna go to a subdivision in New Hampton. The city we're going to do, we're, we, we need to be in is Broadview Heights. We don't care if it's owner occupied. We don't care, we don't care. We're going to look at the homes that have sold. And we're gonna go back to, let's go back to September of 2018. And let's go to October of 2021. Gotta clear out that zip code. There's 83 properties now that, that match that criteria. Okay, but remember they want that, they wanted that estate size home. So we're gonna go four plus bedrooms. We're gonna go three plus bathrooms. 27 properties that sold from September of 2008 to October of 2020. Could we not take any of these houses here and go and reach out to these sellers and say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Kirk, I noticed that you bought your house back in 2018 and wanted to see, wanted to see if you were interested in possibly moving. I have a client that would love to buy this property. I would love to buy your property. Oh, but you don't have a three car garage. Oh man, my client really wants a three car garage. Okay, thank you so much. We're gonna go, we're gonna go through and we're gonna see if we can find three car garage in here. We can't, that, that's not an option. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna go back into Wyndham and we're gonna look at Wyndham now. And we're gonna see if Wyndham has a three car garage. It doesn't, so we're gonna keep moving until we find a property that meets what our client wants that, that, and they're, they're willing to sell. Guys, this circle prospecting, is a, it, this is a tremendous opportunity for you because you know, you know that you have the buyer, you just have to go down and go find the seller. If you were to take a buyer and go, hey, I have a seller that's, looking, that's interested in selling, this is what they're willing to sell their house for, and we're gonna be able to put this together and you're not going to be in multiple offers, you're not going to overpay, you're not going to have to give up ever the sun, the moon, and the stars to win. Is that something? Is that something you're interested in? The buyer's going to say yes, absolutely. Right? The buyer's going to say no, no brainer. Right? So let's say no. So you you got that side figured out. Now let's say you just listed this property. Let's say you just listed this property. You put it up, you did, your, you did it right, right? You had the opportunity to market it. You did the coming soon, hit the market on a, on a Friday, showings until four o'clock on Saturday. On Sunday, seller makes their decision. 47 showings, 13 offers. You can only choose one, so 12 people lose. Under contract now. Well, crap, I can go sell, I can, if I go find 12 more houses, I can, I got 12 more buyers. So now you're going to go back into that community and you're going to find these same people and you're going to say, Mr. Seller or Mr. Homeowner, I just listed 123 Main Street. We had 47 showings and 13 offers in 48 hours. There are 12 people that want to move into your community and they can't find a house. Who do you know that might be interested in moving in the next three months in your community that I can talk to that might be looking to make some money on their, on their real estate investment? Who doesn't want to be a listing agent in this market? Like, I don't know one agent that doesn't want to be a listing agent right now. It's way more fun to be the listing agent than the buyer's agent, right? So if we can circle prospect through this, we can create, we can create inventory. We can find homes for our clients. We can find homes for other agents' clients. We can then sit back, watch the Super Bowl on Sunday, and know that I don't have to rush out and go find this. See what I'm saying? So circle prospecting is a really cool thing, and it's a really great opportunity for you to go find what your buyer is looking for, to go find that listing, to procure your open house, to guarantee your open house is a success. 
all and doing this all while you're making while you're becoming the expert because you can go back into broker or agent metrics you can pull this information you can show the story you can tell the story and use real raw numbers to do it you can then go into the mls and find those people it's going to allow you to win and in this market who doesn't want to win because guys you're we were talking about this yesterday in westlake Buyers aren't finding what they want on the retail side of things. So they're going to new construction and they're either going to go to new construction with you because you took them through a buyer consultation that led them there, or they're going to go after hours on a, on a Saturday morning without you because they don't know the value that you bring to new construction. And now you're not getting paid and you just lost a client. Or you're going to take them and you're building your sales pipeline for September, October, November, because of how backed up new construction is right now. So you're building your future pipeline, but what does February, March, April, May, June, July, and August look like? We can backload our pipeline for the spring market right now today by focusing on these few little things that are going to help you win, that are going to help you win. But not only are they gonna help you win, they're gonna help your client win. And if they help your client win, don't you think they're gonna refer you more business. So if your goal is only to sell 24 houses in 2021, if you were to take eight saleable listings, eight, I'm not saying don't light the world on fire. If you were to take eight saleable listings, those homes sell, you take those eight people, they go buy eight homes. That's now 16. If you did such a great job on the eight listings and on the eight purchases, those people are going to refer you to at least one person who are going to buy or sell. And now you have your 24. And all you did was focus on eight great listings. It's not, it's not hard, but it's also not easy. And this year is gonna be a great year for the people that are gonna figure this out and go out and build their business and take the territory that they need because the pie, this pie that we're working in in this market is huge, right? It's massive. It's massive. There's so many houses. We don't have an inventory shortage. We're not losing, we're not losing homes to wildfires and hurricanes and tornadoes and natural disasters and things like that, like, like, like some other parts of the country. We don't have a, an inventory shortage, guys. The shortage that we have is a lead generation shortage. We don't have enough people going out there finding people that want to sell. We have a lot of people sitting back on the sideline waiting for somebody else to go do the easy part so that they can then go work their tail off to either not make any money or make some money. But if you took a listing today, isn't that a guaranteed paycheck? Isn't taking a listing in today's market a guaranteed paycheck? I think so. I think so. And I'd like to see you take more listings. Because at the end of the day, I want you to be able to take a vacation this year. I want you to be able to shut it down for a weekend. I don't want you to worry. I don't want you to stress. I don't want you to have to deal with life as a buyer's agent who's handicapped and, and handcuffed by their clients. And at the moment's notice, you have to drop what you're doing, run out and go show a property. I don't want that for you. Unless that's of course what you want. I hope this was valuable. Um, I hope this was a good, a, good, uh, a good investment in your time and in your business. Uh, thank you for joining. If you have questions, um, let's see. If you have questions, you can go into the Russell Connect Facebook group here that I, I don't even, I didn't even look. Um, I don't even know if there's anything. Let me, let me go ahead and do that before I jump off as it loads. Internet's moving really slow today. This is awesome. All right, I don't see any comments right now, but that doesn't mean they're not there. So I hope you have a great day. If you have questions, let me know. Um, again, Rich Gannon, manager of the Westlake office, here to help you build and grow your business. Happy Thursday.